So I went for a bike ride and um, I hadn't ridden this bike in like three months, but I plugged the charger into it before I went for the ride and the charger's light was immediately green, so I assumed the battery was full. Jumped on the bike, rode down the hill, didn't use the, 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 the electric motor on the way down. And of course, when I turn around and want to come back up the hill, I fire up the electric motor and the motor turns off immediately. The whole system shuts down, don't even get a display anymore. So I had to uh, huff it manually the whole way back up the hill. But, uh, you know, everything's pointing to this battery being completely dead. Whoop, sorry about that. Even though the charger, when I plugged it in, had a green light, very likely what happened is this battery was so low that the charger didn't even recognize the battery. Or the BMS had turned the battery off. And so the charger didn't charge this battery. So um, it's effectively completely dead. So now we'll have to bring it up and revive it. There's a few issues though, um, because this is a 48 volt battery, um, my bench power supply only goes up to 30 volts, so this, I don't even have a bench power supply that can deliver the voltage that this thing is going to need to revive it. Um, secondly, the charger won't charge this unless it sees it, unless the BMS turns it back on, so I have to, I do have to effectively jump start this until it's recharged enough and then I can use the regular charger. The other thing I'm a little concerned about is we don't know if there was um, a self-discharging cell in the pack that brought the pack down. We don't know why the pack is completely dead. Um, it's possible that the electronics for the um, electric motor have some parasitic loss. Um, or there could be a self-discharging cell. There could just be one um, pack that's completely, um, that's, that's uh, discharged itself and the rest of the battery could be damn near full. And um, that's what's caused our, uh, you know, the BMS to turn off the battery because there's one self-discharging cell. So my choices are to just try and jumpstart this, charge it up, and hope that the cells are still in balance. The BMS does do balancing, but very slow balancing. And because this is a 14S battery pack, I can't plug in like an XT60 or a, uh, my ISDT or the... Um, uh, iCharger X6 or X8 or whatever, none of them support a 14S configuration, so I can't even use an RC charger anyway. So I got to decide if I just want to jump start this and, and then slowly trickle charge it, or if I want to maybe open the pack up and maybe put a multimeter on it just to see how healthy the pack is. And if the cells are all discharged, then it just means there's probably some sort of parasitic loss from the motor. And that drained the whole battery down, which is fine. I can then jumpstart it and bring it up. Um, in fact, the more I talk, the more I think I'm going to do that. Um, I think I'm going to open this up, multimeter the different uh, uh, cell, cell groups. And if they're all low, then I'm just going to, you know, jumpstart the pack and, and slowly bring it back up. Um, but if, there's one, if they're all high, except for maybe one group, then that group is self-discharging and I'm going to have to maybe disassemble the pack and, and rebuild that part of the pack if there is a self-discharging section. So I think, yeah, I think we're going to have to throw this on the bench and, and, uh, and check it manually. Okay, here is the battery. Um, First thing I'm going to look for is any BMS leads that have popped off or anything like that. I don't initially see any. This is a spot welded battery with BMS leads that are then uh, soldered on. Yeah, I don't see any issue with that. Um, I need to, I think I can need to flip this over like this. Just make sure we haven't crushed through any of the balance leads. The little, little heat mark on that wire, but nothing, nothing too bad. Okay. Uh, 
the BMS plug uh, is attached, it looks like. It is attached. I wonder if we have any, yeah, I wonder if there's any out of balance. It's kind of a nasty, I don't know what happened with that. I don't remember. Kind of a nasty connection. Big blob of solder, don't really remember what I was doing there. That's kind of nasty, but the rest of the pack seems okay. Yeah, the rest of the pack seems okay. Maybe it is a, maybe it is an out of balance situation. Um, we might need to probe uh, these batteries and see what we see. Let's let's do it. It's a pain in the butt because there are 14 separate packs here. Um, okay, 4 4.09, 4.09, 4.09. 4.09 4 3.14 okay that's a problem uh, let's check this one 4 4.08 4.09 4.1 4.1, 4 4.07, 4.07, that's about, that is about all of them. So I do think there was a pack that was messed up over here. And the irony is, it is the cell with all this spot, with all this freaking solder on. So I wonder if this cell, I wonder if this, I need to look here. It's difficult to, to see which pack it is part of. So I think these were five cells. These were five cells per, per pack. Okay, these five right here, let me recheck these five right here. I think, uh, 3.1, yeah, I think, yeah, so what I think is happening is, even though it's bounced back to 3.1, I think it's dipping, when you put a load on, it's sucking that cell below um, three volts and the BMS is turning off. Um, so the rest of the pack is fully charged except this one cell. And I think I damaged, something happened with this cell. Um, I mean, you can just tell. I don't know what the hell happened there. I don't know if I blew through and tried to fill it with some solder. Or maybe it blew out itself. I just don't know what has happened there. Um... So, I think we need to replace this cell here. Now, I need to find out if I have any more of these um, purple cells. Let me check my storage and see what I got. Okay, I have desoldered the balance lead off this pack. Here's the pack of five that you can see that we're trying to disconnect. Um, they are cross welded onto this pack of five because this was the parallel connection, I mean the series connection right here. I'm trying to decide if I wanna rip all this nickel off here and just redo it. You know what, I've already, I just decided I do want to rip all the nickel off and just redo it. Um, yeah. Hmm. 
Now this is a 48 volt pack, so I need to be careful. This can technically shock me. It is high enough voltage to shock. Um, you can see that the DIY spot welder did a pretty good job because these connections are putting up a good fight. Okay, those five are free. You can see there's the positives, there's the negatives. Um, now we need, we need to disconnect these series connections here. Um, I might have to disconnect this uh, balance wire here. Put a piece of tape on it so it can't short on anything. Okay, it's out of the way. So technically, um, these uh, these wire these connections here need to come up because it's again it's these cells right here in the middle that seem to be out of balance. small spark because I bridged with these pliers but that's fine okay last connection and another little spark but that's fine okay we have our cell separated let me get this old nickel out of the way and now let's multimeter these individual cells and see if one of them, one of them might be completely dead and just dragging the pack down. Um, let's let's see. I have to say the one that had looked nasty with the solder on it, without the the weird bus bar, and um, it honestly looks fine without the um, without the uh, nickel on. It just looks like I made a mess of the nickel and the solder when I was trying to attach the the balance lead. So. Um, it's not so bad now, but anyways, let's let's multimeter things and see um, if we can see a culprit here. 3 3.15, 3.15, 3.15, 3.15, and then this is the suspect one, 3.2, ironically. Um, and again, if I go to the next pack, which is um, disassembled, you can see everything is 4.1. Yeah, and if I check this next pack on this side, Yeah, so that BMS was doing a good job balancing this, except for this this middle series of batteries are, are um, acting up. What I am going to do is I'm going to leave these batteries um, overnight. I want to see if one of them is, is self-discharging. Um, right now, we don't know which one is the misbehaving one because they're all at 3.1. Um, Yeah, right now we just don't know which one is the self-discharging cell. So let's leave them and we'll check them uh, in a few hours. Change of plans. I'm going to um, cut these five cells out and um, I am going to put them on the Lito Carlas, check their internal resistance and run capacity tests on them and just see if, if one of them is, is way out of capacity or, or super high internal resistance. Um, now you can get these cells out by like 
by cutting these little nubs that are kind of holding them in place and we should be able to lift them out um, well, without disassembling the pack because I don't want to disassemble the pack obviously. And just got to get the little nubs. Okay, I think that should be enough to push them out. Okay, here they are. I'm going to clean them up a little bit. They still have some of that nickel on them. Just to make sure that... that... Ideally, I'd replace all of them, but I actually could only find one replacement cell of this... Of this um, kind so um, I need to find the one that is self-discharging um, okay let's load these on the Lito collars and let's uh, run us uh, let's cycle them and see what happens uh, these Lito collars with uh, with these recessed things the Lito collars don't often get a good connection sometimes you got to put a little magnet on the um, on the battery tip to help it get a good uh, to help it get a good connection. Okay, so that one is there. That one is there. That one is there. That one is there. And that one is there. Okay, so let's see what we got here. 80 milli milliamp hour 68 125 46 65 this one is super high internal resistance let us check and this is the one that had that nasty bob blob on it so this is the suspect suspect cell and let's put it back in yeah high internal resistance again um, all right, I am going to uh, reset them and then um, run a uh, run a test on them. Okay, they're doing a one amp test, and uh, we'll capacity test all of these batteries, and uh, you know we'll see what. Uh, We'll see if, if, if this is the suspect one. I want to mark. This is the one that we think might be suspect. But we'll run capacity tests on them. It does have the highest internal resistance. And uh, what the heck? How is this one already at 4.2 volts? What the heck is going on here? I mean, all these other ones were at 3.1. What is going on here? There, this cell, this cell is really acting weird. Just how can it already be charged? It can't. Um, I mean, it, it, it's got to be completely it's got to be completely dead inside that it's already charged up full. I'm going to move it out. These other ones are running their fastest. I'm going to put it in this side and see what this side has to say about it. So now it says 3.67. Uh, let's see what happens when it goes into charge mode out of curiosity. Oh, look at this thing. Look at this thing. This cell is garbage. This cell's garbage. Look, it's already 
fully charged. Um, yeah, this this cell is garbage. It's garbage. All the other ones are charging norm. All the other ones are charging up normally. This one, yeah. Yep. All right. Already decided. I don't have to do any more testing. This thing is is complete garbage. It it can't decide if it's full, if it's empty. It it's charging up instantaneously. It's it's garbage. Okay, that one is going in the garbage. This is our new one. I am actually going to uh, let these actually, I'm actually going to just charge these up full because this battery is full and the rest of the pack is nearly full. Um, so I want these all, uh, I want these all charged up a bit. Yeah, let's get these all to about 4 volts. This is at 4.1 volts about. And uh, then we'll uh, insert them back, spot weld the pack, and this thing should be in service. Yeah, that battery is garbage. It's in the trash. Um, it's just not behaving right. Okay, these five batteries are back up to 4.1 volts, same as the rest of the pack, so we can rebuild this thing. By the way, before I continue, I want to thank my buddy uh, Michael for making me this 3D printed... Um, sign here i keep forgetting to put it in my videos but uh, there it is it looks awesome anyways let's rebuild this pack so these cells are all gonna have to be negative up like this this one's a bit tight there we go and there we go okay um, we'll need some nickel strip to go across here and rebuild this part of the pack and we will have to attach this balance lead onto here and then we'll have to do it on the back side as well. I have my BIFRC spot welder here. And uh, I just need to find some point, uh, some point uh, one five nickel. I think this is the point one five, so this will work. So let's rebuild this. Uh, let's rebuild this pack. Uh, it's important to be careful when you're working with a pack like this and you're rebuilding because everything is kind of live and everything can uh, easily short circuit if you aren't careful. This is a bit long, a bit close to the next battery, so I'm going to chop a little bit off. All right. Let's fix this in place. Oh, you know, I never set the power level yet. Let's kick that up to about a blue. Okay, those are connected. Uh, let me do a few more here, and then uh, we'll, uh, you know, we'll test the battery and make sure it's happy, and go from there. I guess I'll probably uh, time lapse you for the rest of this. Okay, the pack is reassembled. Uh, we should have voltage now on here. We do, 50, 53 volts. 
So this pack is uh, reassembled, ready to go back into the case. Um, it's a bit of a pain closing this case back up um, just because it's so tight. And then I use these XT60 connectors to connect it to the, um, the, uh, the pins that go out to the motor. Um, and so I got to fit these two XT60s in here and then fit it all in here. It is a bit of a, a, bit of a struggle. Um, but we can uh, try. So you start by sliding this in here and then connecting this XT onto this XT. Okay. And now we just need to close it up and not squish any wires in the process. But this part is always tricky. Uh, I wish I hadn't used XD60 connectors here, but although I'm not sure what else I could have used. Um, oh, there we go. That might have just sort of slid into place. It's close. What is kind of squishing? Okay, that is pretty good. Let me get a couple screws in here. And we can put it on the bike. Okay, let's lock this on the bike. Connect it and check that everything turns back on. So this kind of locks into the railing. Like this. Okay, almost there. Okay, I think that's locked on. Then we use the key to permanently lock it on. Okay, and then I always put a little extra Velcro strap on here just to make sure it doesn't rattle while I'm riding. Okay, that's good. Let's plug this into here. Okay, let's see if... Okay. It turns on, so uh, 53 volts. So I think we're back up and running. I think it was just a bad cell pulling down the uh, pulling down the pack, and I think we're ready to go.